by looking at intermolecular force of attraction. All right, so intermolecular forces, these are hydrogen bonding, Van der Waals, and permanent dipole. All right, so first, intermolecular force, it's the attraction between molecules. So it's not the actual bond within a compound. So for example, in water, This is a covalent bond, all right? So that is not an intermolecular force. But between two molecules of water, I soon explain how we get these negative and positive charges. So between the hydrogen and the oxygen, there will be an attraction. So this is the intermolecular force, which is hydrogen bond. All right, so this is the intra, but well, this is inter between two molecules not within. So I just want to make that distinction. All right. So we are looking at intermolecular forces and the three of them, hydrogen bond, van der Waals forces and permanent dipole. So the first thing I'm going to do is explain the term dipole and how we get it. All right. So dipole. And I will get back to hydrogen bonding. All right, so when you have a covalent compound, right? All right, let's just look at a covalent bond. So a bond between two non-metals. Now, if you have a bond between carbon and hydrogen, right, it's covalent. So we know that the electrons are being shared, right? However, these electrons, they are not shared equally. Was someone asking a question just now? All right, so these two electrons, they are not shared equally. So when we're going to explain this term dipole also, I want to add the term polar and non-polar. So to understand the intermolecular forces, we need to understand the term polar and non-polar which will give rise to the dipole, all right? So polar and non-polar, it will come about because of a next term, which is electronegativity. All right, so to understand the whole intermolecular force, we're going to look at first electronegativity, and that is what will lead to bonds being polar and nonpolar. So oxygen is a very electronegative atom. So if it is very electronegative, that means it will pull onto electrons strongly. Hydrogen is not is not it's not 
electronegative and to an extent like oxygen. So the electrons, they are not going to be shared equally. They will be very close to oxygen. So I'm, so I'm going to move it closer to oxygen. So with the electrons this close to oxygen, it, the electron density has basically increased. So the oxygen atom will develop a slightly negative charge and the hydrogen atom, it will develop a slightly positive charge, all right? Or you can say a negative pole and a positive pole, all right? So now because you have two pole, we have a dipole. So we have just gotten a dipole because one atom is electronegative and the next one is not. So when you have electronegative atom bonded to one that is not, the bond is going to be polar, all right? And so we get a dipole because of the positive end and the negative end. Two poles, that is a dipole. So once you have a dipole, the molecule is said to be polar. All right. Now, over here, where we speak of permanent dipole, the electrons at no point in time are going to move over to hydrogen. All right. So because they are not going to move over to hydrogen at any point in time, it means that this will remain forever, right? So it's permanent. So this here is a permanent dipole. All right. So I'm just going to put some pointers on how we got the permanent dipole.
continuing it over here. 